I think it's fair to say that Matt Walsh has done more than any individual in pushing back against gender ideology, the extreme nonsense on the left, and making opposition to it mainstream. What is a Woman was a phenomenal documentary. Phenomenal. And if you go back and watch it, you'll realize that the reason it was so good is because all Matt Walsh did was sit back and ask questions and let other people talk uh, and reveal their own nonsense to them, to everyone. And that's a very good strategy that Matt Walsh should employ more because as soon as he opens his mouth, he's prone to saying very dumb things. And I think anyone who's seriously interested in creating a coalition of regular people to push back against the far left gender ideology nonsense, we need to ditch Matt Walsh because he says things that make no sense. For example, here's him bitching to Jordan Peterson about how body modification for adults in general should be illegal. You know, I'm inclined to agree with you on that front, but I want to push back. We might as well talk about this. What do you think of breast enhancement? Yeah, I think, uh, and, and it would be, you'd have to draw some distinctions and it, you'd, you'd end up with, with maybe some harder cases than what you have with kids. Because with kids, it should be pretty simple. They can't consent to this, leave them alone. Theoretically, adults can, so that's what makes it slightly more complicated. But I would, you know, I, I think that there are some clear distinctions that we can note right off the bat. So for example, breast enhancement, the idea is you're enhancing something that you already have. Whether you're enhancing it for the better or the worst is like a, a question of taste, I suppose. Personally, morally, I, I, I would not want most forms of plastic surgery, unless we're talking about, you know, reconstructive, you're disfigured from a fire or something like that. But sure, personally and morally, I think that's perfectly right and fair enough. I, I could probably even agree with that personally and morally not legally. But I do think that there's a real distinction between plastic surgery, which is meant to enhance body parts that you are already possess, and plastic surgery that is meant to remove healthy body parts or create a body part that you don't possess and could never possess. The fact that somebody wants to have their healthy body parts removed is all the evidence you need to begin with. This person is mentally unwell and they, they do need help, but it's not that kind of help. They need psych... Okay, so what he's saying is the legislation can't stop at the kids. It should be illegal for adults to engage in body modification. So people who have horns on their heads and all that weird shit, which I totally agree, if you're willing to do that to your face or in your head, that that's an indication that you're mentally unwell. Matt Walsh is saying a federal ban on performing gender-affirming care surgeries or whatever on children, that wouldn't be enough. We have to take it to the next level, including adults. You know, for me, protecting kids from this is the entry point. It's the first thing we should do because uh, they are the least able to protect themselves. And as a as a society, it's our we're called by God to protect our children. But as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't it doesn't end there. Even if they passed a federal law, you know, kind of the, the final thing on the political end when it comes to kid transitioning. Now we start talking about federal bans on uh, child castration mutilation across the country. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. Let's just say that it did. I don't think that that is the end of the conversation at all when it comes to this, because I, I also think that adults are are victims as well. Like I, I don't I don't think that I don't think that doctors should be able to do this to anyone. The reason it is fair to say that the gender surgeries going on in children are satanic and degenerate and disgusting is precisely because it's children. It's a totally different thing if it's an adult. And what a complete political waste of time to say, even if we got what we want, which is federal protection for children, sure, I'm for that. That's not far enough. We need to stop it for adults. We need to draw these arbitrary lines now for adults. And now we have to determine, oh, well, you can enhance body parts you already have, but you can't add new ones, which means horns and all that crazy shit you see, that needs to be illegal. It's like, look, again, I think those people are mentally ill. I would not recommend it. I would not want to be around someone like that. But I'm not going to make it a political point to legislate against that. It is a waste of goddamn time. Right. So you basically think that the right to perform sex transition surgery should be permanently removed from the domain of what physicians are allowed to offer as service. Exactly. I mean, I, I'm, I'm inclined to agree with that. And you're, and that's I think that's right. If, yeah. There's no way to legislate that properly. There's no way to do that without also making other forms of body modification illegal. This is completely at odds with people like Abigail Schreier or J.K. Rowling or Joe Rogan who are against gender ideology but are not against adults transitioning. So you lose all them and you lose a huge chunk of people who are needed to push back against this ideology. And then you just have the government interfering between adults and their doctors, not children and their doctors because the government should interfere with that because it's, again, satanic and degenerate and disgusting that adults would perform irreversible surgeries on children 
children. That's disgusting. But when it comes to adults, you can only legislate so much. And this is a losing issue. And all this will do is allow the gender ideologues to point to that and say, oh, look, they, they really do want to stop adults from transitioning. It never was about the kids. He says it. It's, it wasn't about the kids. And here's the other uh, goofy shit that I think is just, again, evidence of Matt Walsh's incompetence and moral weakness. Michael Knowles recently got in trouble for some words he uttered in relationship to eradication. And that spilled over to some degree into your domain. Do you want to walk us through that particular brouhaha? Yeah, he, he, of course it was the left. And I think it started, with, usually it starts with media matters. I'm not sure who started it this time, but someone pulled the clip from his, I think it was a CPAC speech. I believe his exact words are, we, we need to, kind of a similar message to what I was just talking about. Yes, we want to protect the kids. That's our first goal, but it doesn't end there. Trans ideology itself, we have to defeat. And so we want to eradicate trans ideology from public life. And so it's the ideology that we're attacking. So as you know, that's not what was said. Michael Knowles said we need to eradicate transgenderism. There can be no middle way in dealing with transgenderism. If it is false, then for the good of society, and especially for the good of the poor people who have fallen prey to this confusion, transgenderism must be eradicated from public life entirely. The whole preposterous ideology at every level. If Michael Knowles had said trans ideology, no one would have had an issue. That was the whole argument was you should say gender ideology. Gender ideology should be eradicated. It's disgusting and degenerate and satanic. Transgenderism, which is the condition of being transgender, is not. And there are people who are like, well, but this is what he meant. Transgenderism meant the ideology. You're reading too much into it. He even specifically says ideology right after saying eradicate transgenderism. The whole preposterous ideology. This is the same intellectual rationalization that the leftists who say we want to eradicate whiteness. Well, we don't mean white people. We mean whiteness, the ideology. So when we say white people will cease to exist, the idea is the category will too. And racially, the hope would be that black people would too. You know what I mean? Which is, you know, the case that the story makes. It does not mean that white people will be physically eradicated from the face of the earth. Okay, you're playing cover for Julius Malema in South Africa, who says we want to cut the throat of whiteness. And he said, well, he doesn't mean white people. Oh, well, that's oddly enough exactly where the rhetoric leads. When you want to hit them hard, go after a white man. They feel a terrible pain. We are starting with this whiteness. We are cutting the throat of whiteness. So all of the people who want to play intellectual games and say, oh, well, transgenderism doesn't mean trans people. Oh, well, whiteness doesn't mean white people. It's like, congrats. I, I believe you're stupid enough to believe that just because you don't mean it that way doesn't mean that the people who are a lot more mentally ill than you are will latch onto that rhetoric and do exactly what every sane person recognizes will happen when that kind of rhetoric escalates. And it's a damn shame that Jordan Peterson, just like he did in the Benjamin Netanyahu interview, just rolls over and doesn't press Matt Walsh on the fact that, hey, Jordan Peterson knows a thing or two about disgust rhetoric and the language that is used prior to genocide. And eradication is exactly the kind of stuff that's used. And so that's the disgust thing. That's unbelievably important. People are often accused, if they're conservative, of being fearful, and that's why they, you know, suppress other people's viewpoints. But that doesn't look right. It's low openness and high orderliness, and that looks like it's associated with disgust, and that looks like it's associated with something called the extended immune system, which is the proclivity of people to, to keep themselves away from potential sources of contamination. And that was a manifestation of disgust, not of fear. It's a whole different thing. Drag phobia, they say. First of all, it's not phobia. It's uh, drag, I, I don't know, drag disgust, drag nausea, one of those words, it's not a phobia. You don't scare me. I'm scared on behalf of the kids. I'm scared for the kids that are being exposed to this stuff and the effect it's going to have on them. But no, 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 no one's afraid of you. And the thing about something that's disgusting is you don't isolate it exactly. You destroy it, right? You, it's the thing you do with rats and insects, for example, is destroy them. So with this, this is not compromise, okay? All we can do with this is crush it, destroy it. That's what you do with evil. And that's what we have to do with this. One of the things that Maya and I found when we were writing this paper, we were looking at the discourse that precedes genocide in genocidal states. And the enhancement of a sense of victimization on the part of one of the groups, usually the group that's going to commit the genocide, first of all, their sense, as vi their sense of being victims is much heightened by 
the demagogues who are trying to stir up this sort of hatred. There can be no middle way in dealing with transgenderism. If it is false, then for the good of society, and especially for the good of the poor people who have fallen prey to this confusion, transgenderism must be eradicated from public life entirely. The whole preposterous ideology at every level. It's really terrifying because one of the things people often said about Germany was that, you know, it was a very civilized country and yet it descended into barbarity. But conscientiousness is a very good predictor of long-term success. And so you could say, well, conscientious societies are more civilized, but they're also more orderly. And that makes them more disgust sensitive. And so what it might have easily, might have easily been in Germany was that it was an excess of civilization rather than its lack that produced exactly these consequences. And that's a far more frightening proposition and one that's, I believe, much more likely to be true. So if people are serious about pushing back against the far left bullshit and far right bullshit, then you need to have a coalition of normal everyday people who are not ideologically blinded one way or another. And Matt Walsh should consider shutting the hell up and continuing to make good documentaries instead, because he's made, like I said, great documentaries. This kind of bullshit from him and Jordan Peterson is not winning anyone over in the middle. They're not winning over a Joe Rogan or a JK Rowling or an Abigail Schreier. And those are the kind of people who represent exactly the kind of people that we need on our side against the far left, satanic, degenerate, disgusting bullshit that the medical industrial complex is pushing on children. So until next time, good luck and Godspeed.